is dead. I'm seeing a disturbing trend uh, across the political spectrum and depressingly a lot in independent media spaces specifically. There is this narrative. <clears throat> There's this narrative that's being cooked up, <clears throat> especially in the light of Donald Trump's assassination attempt, his largely empty rhetoric over uh, fighting the deep state, which if you think he's fighting the deep state, I don't, I don't know how to help you. Um, <clears throat> you're believing something that goes against all of the behavior of four years of his presidency, but I digress. There is this narrative floating around that I need to squash. I got to squash it. You know why I have to squash it? Because I'm a fucking bubble burster. And I hate being a bubble burster because it caused a lot of people to get mad at you and then begrudgingly admit you were right and apologize like a while after. But you got to deal with the like weird, the weird like cognitive. You got to basically always manage people's cognitive dissonance. And thankfully, I'm someone with enough emotional intelligence to kind of do that. But I'm also really mad and think everybody's stupid. So, like, I got to fight that, too, I guess. Um, but I digress. There's this narrative that Donald Trump is anti-establishment. He's and we saw this a lot. I, I, I got a lot of uh, independent news people. Talking about how the deep state wants to take him out. The deep state wants him gone because he's anti-establishment. I'm going to be the first one to fucking say Donald Trump is not anti-establishment. He is the fucking establishment. He always has been the establishment. This guy went golfing with the Clintons, guys. Why would the deep, <laughs> why would the deep state take him out? Eric Bolton. He got Bolton on his fucking team. And he's anti-establishment? Why would this why would the deep, deep state take him out? What power did he ever fucking threaten? What are your thoughts, Yeti? Because I'm sure you've seen this as well. All these people saying oh, yeah. he's a big threat to the establishment. Well, he's not a threat to the establishment. I don't think they're the biggest fan of him sometimes. But like like, that's the thing with the thing, with the shooting him. What would even be the benefit of killing Trump? All it would have done was set off a civil war, unless that's what they wanted to do then. But in my thinking, like... I mean, like, let's... Okay, so... Tax cuts to billionaires and corporations. Mm. Big establishment threat. Uh, Operation Warp Speed. Hey, MAGA, did you guys all forget that this whole vaccine thing that you're enraged about started with Donald Trump? He's still proud of it. He's still telling you and everybody you know to, to buy into that completely. He's proud of it. Now, from a psych analysis, I can tell you why that is. Because Donald Trump is first and foremost a narcissist. No, he's not a psychopath. He doesn't have antisocial person. He's just a he's just a plain narcissist. So we have because Operation Warp Speed, the vaccine thing, is something he did. He has to stand by it because he has to paint it as white. Because he has to paint himself as white in order to preserve his grandiosity. Mm -hmm. What are his honest thoughts about the vaccine? I couldn't tell you. I don't live in his head. I think he'll. I think Donald Trump will say whatever Donald Trump can say to get applause. Yep. That's it. I don't think he has principles. I don't even think he has a party. Donald oh, Trump used no, to be a Republican. Have any principle. Or sorry, Democrat. Donald Trump used to be a yeah, used to be a Democrat. Switch Republican. Yeah. He changes his mind about everything. It's it's just he'll do whatever he can to get the applause. That's it. Mm. Um, yep. Oh, he's a snake because, oil salesman. That's all he is. Yeah, he, he's, he's a con really man. That's it. He's just a fucking con man. But a lot of people are peddling this narrative, even independent people who should have more critical thinking because they have critical thinking on everything else are running with this weird sort of thing that like Donald Trump's some sort of threat to power. Guys. No. There's no threat to power here. He the is only literally... Reason they the only reason I could see them trying to take him out 
was to cause a civil war. That's like that's all I can see any reason for them wanting to. Yeah. Also, but, as per the assassination attempt, guys, um, if the deep state wanted to take Donald Trump out, he'd be fucking dead. And you know why we all know that? We all witnessed this happen in front of the whole world before. The last time a president threatened power. Mm -hmm. It's called JFK. They didn't miss. They made sure they didn't miss. They took multiple shots and both of them hit pretty accurately. So I mean, that depends on how many shooters there were. What are you talking about? It was just Lee, Lee Harvey Oswald, wasn't it? That's that's what the TV man told me. Um, he definitely wasn't framed for being a communist supporter in the USSR. That definitely didn't happen. That's what I fucking love. It's just they couldn't help themselves. They're like, we have to insert some anti-communism somewhere here. We got it. They yeah. always have to. They got to sprinkle some like red scare propaganda, yeah. even when it doesn't even make sense. Even when it's not even yeah. topical, it's like let's just sprinkle well, he, some like communists. He was actually. He barely was. Apparently, one of the things they, the reasons they think he was framed, was because he was gonna um, defect to the USSR. But I got it. That's not a whole lot of info I have on that one. Oh, that's weird, because, like, why would someone in America, such a thriving nation, defect to a place like the USSR, which I've always been told was, like, a very bad place that was awful in every way? There definitely wasn't a great black migration in the 80s. No. Definitely didn't happen. Guys, it's almost like we've been lied to about absolutely fucking everything when it comes to other countries. But I digress. No, no, China's lying, and Russia... Iran. Wait, what other ones are lying this week? Uh, Cuba. Probably lies. Cuba, oh, yeah. Cuba yeah, is simultaneous. Cuba. My, favorite, my favorite vaccines, thing about... Those bastards. Yeah. My favorite thing about China is they're doing the classic fascist trope of like China is a massive threat, but also like awful and just like weak. The whole like the enemy is both weak and strong thing. Like, oh, they're they're failing. Yeah, same thing with Russia. It's like, oh, they're failing. They're so bad. They're such a big threat. And it's like, you guys realize you got to pick one. Russia has to resort to wash machines. But also, they're going to (laughs) invade us. What? No. Yeah. Russia's so bad that they're they're totally getting their ass kicked in the Ukraine conflict. But we got to we got to support Ukraine or they're going to take over all of Europe. Well, if they're getting their ass kicked fighting Ukraine. Yeah. How are they going to take over? How are they going to take over Europe? Also, here's, here's the thing that boggles my mind. What, what would Russia ever want more fucking land for? Yeah, I know. They're not hurting well, for land. Are, they have the biggest land mass in the world. Literally, China, maybe. No, no, Russia. Like Russia's, it's it's massive. They will never go without land. Their population density is very low. They don't need more sh- fucking land. They're good. They're all set. Yeah. They might want to give some to China. Actually, maybe kind of balance yeah. out the population. Like, does anyone else want some land? We got free land here, guys. Thankfully, Come, they're in a, Thankfully, they're in an alliance now. <laughs> All against the West. So we're mm-hmm. fucked, but they're probably going to do pretty good. Yeah. I digress. Let's get into whether or not Trump is anti-establishment. Because I need to, I need to squash this. Because I, I, get, I get it when, like, you know, BSDNC covers this. I get it when Fox News covers this. I get it when, like, the main corporate media people start talking about this, but I'm seeing this narrative in independent spaces where Trump's like some kind of anti-establishment, like against the deep state sort of guy. And I need to burst this bubble. I need to burst this fucking bubble because some of these people, I don't know if they're grifting. I don't know if they're just misinformed. Trump is not a threat 
to power. He never was. He never will be. He will never be a threat to power. And I will present this case as thoroughly as I can, because by the end of this demonstration, you cannot tell me that this bitch is a threat to power. It's not going to happen. It's not going to fucking happen. Okay. I'll be right back in two seconds. Of course. I'm listening. This is from Ben Norton. As president, Trump was a loyal ally of the U.S. deep state. He killed Iran's General Soleimani, launched coup and failed evasion invasion of Venezuela, oversaw Bolivia coup, backed Nicaragua coup attempt, boasted of stealing Syria's oil, which some MAGA people are saying like, oh, that's why he, the deep state doesn't like him, because he says things they don't like. He still fucking did it, you idiots. Continued Afghanistan war, correct. Expanded war in Yemen, also correct. That was in response to his video about either the deep state destroys America or we destroy the deep state. Also, I need to remind y'all that he could have destroyed the deep state in the four years he was president. Didn't do it. He continues. Imagine being so delusional, you actually thought Donald Trump would fight the deep state when as president he brought back George Bush's team of unrepentant neocon war criminals John Bolton and Elliot Abrams. This is just empty rhetoric that his credulous fans eat up. Trump sure was resisting the deep state when he checks notes, formally recognized occupied Jerusalem as the so-called capital of apartheid Israel or when he formally recognized Syria's illegally occupied Golan Heights as Israeli colonial territory. The thing the U.S. deep state wants more than anything else in the world is war on China, exactly what Donald Trump delivered. Trump drastically escalated the new Cold War on China, starting a trade war, imposing sanctions, militarizing the Pacific, etc. Here's irrefutable video evidence of Trump fighting the deep state. So that's your uh, that's your anti deep state hero. Every U.S. president is a criminal. Why is Trump facing charges? Not because he resisted the deep state, he didn't. It's because the ruling class is split. For decades, its internal factions were mostly united. But with U.S. hegemony in severe decline, they're at war with each other. When the U.S. empire was at its peak of unipolar hegemony, bipartisanism was also at its peak. It was easy to unite. But internal contradictions come to a breaking point in times of crisis. By the way, it's good for workers when the ruling class is split and fighting in an internecine war. I like, I like that ending part. Comrade Ben. But I digress. So, that's, uh, that's the anti-deep state uh, enjoyer, everybody. I got more. I got way more because I want to make this case as solid as possible. And hopefully I cause as much fucking cognitive dissonance as humanly possible. Because I'm tired of this whole Trump's against the establishment shit. I'm sorry, guys. You're high as fuck if you think Trump's against the establishment. You're high as giraffe pussy. You're higher than giraffe pussy. You're as high as Brachiosaurus pussy. You are higher than Brachiosaurus. <laughs> I'm going to stop. Let's just go on to the next clip. So would you guys get your video taken down talking about <laughs> dinosaurs sexual organs? Uh, what? The end of INN. Brought to you by Dinosaur sex organs okay um this is a base video so if you're not following uh blakely 
go give her a follow. She's got some great opinions. She's got some great tape. She basically breaks down what I just did. Give it a listen. Also, the melted brain take of people being like, oh, it's actually the political elites that are trying to take him out. Why? Why would they need to? He did everything they wanted. Like, can we please unpack this? Why would the elite establishment want to take him out? What did he ever do to upset the apple cart? Nothing. He didn't pardon Julian Assange. In fact, his administration tried to assassinate Assange. He went into office and on day one ripped up the Iran deal because the Israeli regime told him to. He did everything Israel told him to do. Ah, yes, I'm sure Netanyahu is very intimidated by him considering he did everything he wanted him to. Including moving the embassy to Jerusalem because his billionaire sugar daddy told him to. His only accomplishment legislative was tax cuts for that same elite you guys think are after him and for corporations. He never released the JFK or 9-11 files. He stacked his NLRB with union busters. He hired the Epstein guy to be his labor secretary. Like, you guys talk about the powers that be as if they're threatened by him. Oh, no, we can't let Trump win. He might deregulate Wall Street further for the banks. All he does is culture war bullshit. He threatens no power center. If he did, he wouldn't have people like Ackman and Musk and Adelson supporting him. Call me when you've woken them. So, that's pretty much it. Um, this guy isn't a threat to power, guys. I know there's a lot of people, even in independent spaces, saying Trump's some kind of threat to the establishment. Guys, he's really fucking no. 